Hello! Welcome to episode 29 of Art Snaps. I'm Katie, the Engagement Officer for Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's Art on Tour programme, which is all about sharing more of Swindon's art collection with more people and in more places. Of course, unforeseen circumstances this year have meant putting the touring part of Art on Tour on hold, for the most part anyway, and taking a more digital approach to sharing this fabulous collection. So that's why we started Art Snaps. You may not be able to see much of the collection in person right now, but you can listen to me talk about it in these short episodes, where I choose three artworks and tell you a bit more about them. And at the time of recording, it's December, which of course means that I've chosen three artworks with links to Christmas. So let's begin with Gerald Gardner's Christmas Dawning from 1944. And if you've watched slash listened to Art Snaps before and think that this name sounds familiar, it's because I spoke about Gardner in episode 28, which was about light. Gardner had a real talent for capturing the natural effects of light on a landscape, and we have two pieces in Swindon's collection that show this. The drawing I spoke about in the previous episode, called Towards Wiltshire Early Autumn, which is also from 1944, depicts a rickyard in the Cotswolds, bathed in autumnal light. And this one shows the same view of Wiltshire, but of course it shows the landscape in the winter time, and judging by the title, somewhere around Christmas. The figure of a Thatcher appears in both pieces. In the autumn version, he's up a ladder propped against a haystack, but in the winter version, the ladder is put aside, and he's seen cutting into one of the same haystacks seen in the companion piece. So there's an interesting continuation of narrative between the two. But of course, the biggest difference between the two is the much colder midwinter light seen in this piece compared to the warmer light of the other piece. An incredibly clear glowing sky dominates the top two thirds of the composition, transforming the horse and cart and the figure into silhouettes. And surrounding them is this snowy rural scene with hints of blue and purple, as one is likely to see in a cold winter scene, And there's also hints of a warm, glowing orange reflected from the sky, hinting at a transformational time of day. The way Gardner has used all these colours to represent the weather, and perhaps even suggest early morning or evening, is really subtle and beautiful. It's got an incredible sense of atmosphere, and there's no denying the sense of a fresh Christmas chill in the air. If you like this piece, I definitely recommend listening to the previous episode, Light and Luminosity, where I talk a bit more about Gardner and, of course, his other piece, Towards Wiltshire, Early Autumn. Our next piece is by Roger Hilton, an important post-war artist who contributed a lot to the development of abstract art, even though it took him quite a while to establish his artistic career. Just to give you a bit of background before we move on, Hilton studied at the Slade School of Fine Art in 1930, and during World War II he served in the army and spent a difficult three years as a prisoner of war. And after the war, he had jobs teaching, frame making and working in a telephone exchange. It wasn't until the 1950s, when he began to spend more and more time in Cornwall, that Hilton began making headway as an artist who was painting in this incredible, radical manner at the time. He soon became a prominent member of the St Ives School, which was at the centre of modern artistic developments during the 1940s, 50s and 60s. Hilton painted this piece, November 1955, just before his first Christmas in St Ives, which is significant because, though he didn't officially settle there until 1965, it was during the 1950s that lots of artists did move to St Ives, and as I mentioned, Hilton was spending more and more time there. So the 1950s became a decade where art in St Ives was really transforming. And though the artists were all very different, they were linked by their pursuit of abstraction and the dialogue between abstraction and landscape in their work. And we can see this in November 1955, which is a rather bleak response to, I guess, a rather bleak landscape of snow laying on muddy fields. Interestingly, This was at a time when Hilton was interested in sober and austere subject matter, so there's nothing particularly picturesque or uplifting about this work. 
but it's a superb piece of painting which really captures the dreary winter landscape that he experienced and which we've all probably experienced at one time or another. And he's done this without being too descriptive, with just simple lines and planes of colour. There's a sense of a patchwork of snow and mud and shadows, and perhaps a gateway or building of some kind toward the centre. There's an interesting push and pull between abstraction and representation, where we try and make out what's what, but we're kind of denied specific detail in favour of a visualisation of space and a sense of place. And I don't know about you, but I feel a bit chilly just looking at this piece. So let's move on to something a little bit warmer now. The final piece I want to talk about in this Christmas edition of Art Snaps is Peter John Ferguson's Chianti and Apples. Though I do want to preface this by saying that I really don't know much about this painting or the artist, and I don't even have a specific date for it. But we do know that Ferguson was born in 1928 and that it was bought from him for the collection in 1958. So we can reasonably assume that it was painted somewhere in the mid 1900s. We are lacking in specific details for this one, but I still think there are some really interesting things to discuss in relation to it. As you can see, it presents a still life depicting mostly apples and bottles of wine. And I was drawn to this piece for this episode as a reference to the overindulgence that many of us experience at Christmas time. A table filled with various bottles and food scattered all around is quite a familiar sight this time of year. And it has this great warmth as well. The other two pieces I've chosen are kind of snowy, chilly outdoor scenes, whereas this piece is full of warm yellows, oranges and browns. And it feels like the kind of warm, cosy interior that one might associate with this time of year. So I started off with a kind of tenuous link to Christmas with this one. You've got the food, the drink, the warm interior. But I soon realised that the connection is stronger than that because apples actually have some interesting festive associations. They play an important part in many festive traditions this time of year. If you're anything like me, you might think of oranges or clementines as being the most Christmassy fruits, but it's also tradition to put apples in stockings as much as it is oranges. Also, in pagan times, apples were commonly used to decorate Christmas trees, and that tradition was taken on by the Germans, who of course Christianized the Christmas tree. They used to wrap up apples for decorations, and it could be said that the round baubles we use today are a reflection of that tradition. Before rounding off, because this is an art podcast, I want to address Ferguson's interesting, almost mottled use of paint. In case you're wondering, this isn't a bad quality or pixelated image. This kind of soft, hazy look is down to the way Ferguson painted it. I have no information about his intentions here, but it almost looks ephemeral, as if it might dissolve before our eyes, or as if we have blurred vision. I like to think that the way it's painted reflects the blurred vision experienced when too many of these kinds of drinks are consumed. But it also reminds me a little bit of pointillism, which is a painting technique which involves painting lots of tiny dots of colour alongside each other, which when seen from a distance come together as a coherent image. So perhaps Ferguson was simply playing around with new ways of painting and being a bit experimental here. If you have any thoughts or ideas about this, or even know a little bit more about the artist than I do, please do leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And if you don't know anything about Ferguson and you've enjoyed this episode or have anything to contribute to the discussion, please, again, do leave a comment. We love it when people do that. Anyway, that's all from me for today. I'm going to round off with a quick mention of another painting, which is L.S. Lowry's Winter in Pendlebury, which is another superb Christmassy painting from Swindon's collection. And I didn't talk about it today because I've already covered it way back in episode three. So do go ahead and watch that if you're interested in hearing more about this piece. And I also just want to mention a few other things that Art on Tour has been working on to make Swindon's collection more visible whilst the building remains closed. You could pop over to Steam Museum here in Swindon to see Through the Window, which is an exhibition which is free to enter and combines modern artworks from Swindon's art collection with gorgeous vintage DWR posters from Steam's collections. 
Or if you'd prefer to stay home, you can visit Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's profile on Art UK to view our virtual exhibition, Modern British Art, A Story. And alongside this, I've also been publishing blog posts for our website, which expand on some of the artworks and art movements presented in the exhibition. And those are available at www.swindonmuseumandartgallery.org.uk slash art on tour. Finally, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for tuning in. Merry Christmas and a very happy and hopefully much easier new year from Art on Tour and from Swindon Museum and Art Gallery. Thank you and bye for now.